So okay, as you know already with respect to this second chapter, sexual reproduction in flowering plant is concerned. Initially, we have come across introduction to flower, followed by that I covered androecium and gynoecium. Back to last part of the gynoecium. In gynoecium, we have come across members of the gynoecium are called as carpal. Each carpal is composed of three parts: ovary, style, stigma. Followed by that, we have come across mega sporogenesis. Mega sporogenesis. The process of formation of mega spore from mega spore mother cell is called as mega sporogenesis. Under that, you have to remember one point: in ovule, only one cell is get differentiated to form mega spore mother cell. This mega spore mother cell will undergo meiosis and produces tetrad mega spores or four mega spores. Out of four, three will disintegrate and only one is functional. That functional one will contain dense cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus. Nucleus of this mega spore will undergo three successive. mitotic division and produces eight celled embryo sac so this kind of development where only one megaspore is involved in the formation of female gametophyte is called as monosporic or you can call it as a polygonum because it was first discovered by strasburger in polygonum now followed by that look over the next matter pollination transfer of pollen transfer of pollen from anther transfer of pollen from anther to stigma is called as pollination transfer of pollen from anther to stigma is called as pollination pollination are of two type self pollination and cross pollination pollination are of two type self pollination and cross pollination self pollination is also called as autogamy self pollination is also called as autogamy cross pollination is also called as allogamy so transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma is called as pollination pollination are classified into two groups namely self pollination and cross pollination self pollination is also called as autogamy cross pollination is also called as allogamy now look over the definition of self pollination and cross pollination so take care of the definition transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of the same flower is called as self pollination transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of the same flower is called as self pollination transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma of different flower is called as cross pollination transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma of the same flower is called as self pollination transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma of different flower is called as cross pollination next look over few more technical terms like cristo gamy and chasmo gamy cristo gamus and chasmo gamus in comulina in comulina oxalis i viola it is commonly called as common pansy so look over here comilina oxalis i viola it is commonly called as common pansy produces two kinds of flowers namely clistogamous and chasmogamous comilina oxalis viola commonly called as common pansy produces two kinds of flowers 
namely clistogamous flower and chasmogamous flower clistos means closer so in, it is a condition where the bisexual flower it is a condition where the bisexual flower will never open at all it is a condition where the bisexual flower will never open at all as a result compulsorily they have to go for self pollination or in other way it is an adaptation for self pollination clistogamous condition is an adaptation for self pollination i will provide you one more adaptation or out breeding devices for the self pollination homogamy so look over here in comilina oxalis and viola two kinds of flowers are noticed one is clistogamous another one is chasmogamous clistos means closer it is a condition where the bisexual flower will never open at all as a result it will go for self pollination or it is an adaptation for self pollination there are two adaptations are there or there are two out breeding devices are there for the self pollination one is clistogamous condition another one is homogamy it is a condition where androecium and gynoecium will mature at the same time there is a condition where androecium and gynoecium will mature at the same time when they will mature at the same time they will easily go for self pollination and please remember one more point concerned with this clistogamous flowers where androecium and gynoecium will lie very close to each other in this condition androecium and gynoecium will lie very close to each other as a result when the anther will split stigma will easily receive the pollen grains and seed setting is 100% assured in case of this clistogamous flower seed setting is 100% assured in case of clistogamous flower without pollinators in absence of pollinator also seeds are 100% produced in case of clistogamous flowers another type is chasmogamous flower where androecium and gynoecium is exposed in second condition androecium and gynoecium are exposed as a result they can easily go for cross pollination okay so next is two more technical terms two more technical terms i will explain Genogamy and genogamy. Now look over two more matters. Genogamy and genogamy. It is a condition where transfer of pollen from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same species. So in genogamy. pollen grain is transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same species from functional point of view from functional point of view it is like an cross pollination from genetic point of view it is like an autogamy or self pollination look over here i will repeat the matter don't get confused with this technical terms in genogamy transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same species from functional point of view it is like an allogamy or cross pollination from the genetic point of view it is like an autogamy or self pollination so in genogamy transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one flower anther of one flower to the stigma of different plants
So here what happens? Pollen grains are transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of different plant. Based on that, it is very clear that different strains, especially genetically different strains of pollen grains are brought in this condition. Genetically different strains of pollen grains are brought in genogamy. Different strains are brought. So just now we have come across definition of pollination and two types of pollination self-pollination and cross-pollination followed by that we have come across the technical term clistogamous, chasmogamous followed by that you have come across two more wordings chitinogamy and genogamy followed by that now look over pollination by different agencies pollination by different agencies both biotic Both biotic and abiotic agents are utilized by the plants to achieve pollination. Now look over pollination by different agencies. Both biotic and abiotic agents are utilized by the plants to achieve pollination. Biotic means living one, abiotic means non-living. So both biotic and abiotic agents are utilized by the plants to achieve pollination. Majority of the plants will utilize just biotic agents to achieve pollination. But some proportion of the plants will utilize just abiotic agents to achieve pollination. So look over this chart carefully. You will get a number of agents. So look over this chart carefully. You will get a number of agents. Butterfly, birds, snake, insects, etc. But under that, for your syllabus, they have put forward only three types. One is entomophily, pollination by the agency of insects, animophily, pollination by the agency of wind, hydrophily, pollination by the agency of water. So there are Various agents are there that will play a significant role in pollination but for your syllabus they are quoted only three types. One is entomophily, second is animophily, third is hydrophily. Now first look over entomophily. Pollination by the agency of insect is called as entomophily. Pollination by the agency of insect is called as entomophily. Now look over characters of entomophilus flower. You have to prepare four to five characters compulsively. Number one, flowers are large. Flowers are large, brightly colored and showy. Flowers are large, brightly colored and showy. So any part of the flower is modified. It may be on sepals or it may be on petals, or it may be on stamens, or it may be on carpels. They are modified to increase the beauty of the flower to attract the insects for the purpose of pollination. So look over the character number one. Flowers are large in size. They are brightly colored and showy. Any part of the flower is modified to increase the beauty of the flower to attract the insects for the purpose of pollination. They produce as fragrance. So fragrant means a sweet odor. They produce as fragrant and emit a odor or scent. So they produce as fragrant and emit odor and scent. Odor and scent. Even the flowers which are pollinated by the agency of flies and the beetles the flowers which are pollinated by flies and beetles will produce as foul odor. That foul odor will also attract the insects for the purpose of pollination. Look at the second point once again. 
flowers produces fragrant it is an sweet odor or scent to attract the insects even foul odor is also produced by certain flowers which are pollinated by the flies and beetles third character they produces nectar specially nectar is produced by the nectariferous glands nectar is produced by the nectariferous glands nectar is a sugary fluid that will attract the insects for the purpose of pollination pollen grains are heavy thick walled sticky and spiny pollen grains are heavy thick walled so that they are not easily damaged by the visiting insects sticky and spiny so that they can easily get attached to the body of insects back to structure of pollen grain while explaining the pollen grain i covered this point pollen grain is covered by exine and intine or it is covered by an animal up which is made up of two layers outer is called as exine and the inner is called as intine exine is a tough cutinized and often provided with a spinous outgrowth while explaining this i cover two advantages number 1 it will protect the pollen grain from the herbivorous animals or grazing animals or browsing animals second it helps in the dispersal of pollen grain same point pollen grains are heavy thick walled sticky and spiny heavy thick walled so that they are not easily damaged by the visiting insect sticky and spiny so that they can easily get adhere or attached to the body of insects one more last character if the flowers are small all they are aggregated to form inflorescence like structure so that they will become more conspicuous last character if the flowers are small in size all they are aggregated to form an inflorescence like structure so that they will become more conspicuous same character is also noticed even in animal phylae so look over this point once again flowers are aggregated to form inflorescence to become more conspicuous flowers are aggregated to form inflorescence to become more conspicuous same character is also noticed even in the animo phylae look over and please remember two more points pollen and the nectar are the rewards pollen and the nectar are the rewards now question arises what is this reward it is an fees as you people are providing fees to the college and indirectly to teachers also same way pollen and nectar are the rewards or fees many insects consume the pollen and nectar without bringing pollination such insects are called as pollen robbers many insects will consume the pollen and nectar without bringing pollination such a insects are called as pollen robbers next matter and you have to take care of this line also floral rewards floral rewards provide the safe place to lay the eggs floral rewards will provide the place to lay the egg so under that two examples are there one is amorphophyllus one example is amorphophyllus it is the largest flower and height is around 6 feet and second example is moth and yakka moth and yakka take care of the pronunciation it is moth and yakka where you will get symbiotic association where both the partners will get benefit moth will lay the eggs in the locule moth will lay the eggs in the yakka and indirectly helps in pollination but another very interesting point is there the larvae will emerge out from the locule 
on the onset of seed formation. Moth will lay the eggs in the locule of a plant. Locule, you know, already cavity of the ovary containing the ovule. And very interesting point, larvae will emerge out from the locule on the onset of seed formation. So here they are providing a very simple statement. If you are comfortable with yourself, you will be comfortable with others. So next matter is with respect to next matter is with respect to so now look over next matter is anemophily first i covered entomophily pollination by the agency of insect second type is anemo now look over next matter is with respect to anemophily pollination by the agency of wind is called as anemophily pollination by the agency of wind is called as anemophily. Anemophily is generally noticed in grasses. Anemophily is generally noticed in grasses, gymnosperms, sugar cane, corn, etc. Now look over the characters of anemophilus flower. Characters of anemophilus flower. Number one, pollen grains are small, light, and non-sticky pollen grains are small light and non-sticky second stamens have long filament stamens have long filament so second point stamens have long filament so that the anthers can freely expose it to the air stamens have long filament so that the anther can be freely exposed to the air. Third point, versatile condition. In a versatile condition, filament is attached to the anther at the middle. As a result, anther can swing freely in the air. Fourth point, stigma is often large, feathery and sticky. Stigma is often large, feathery and sticky so that pollen grains are more likely to reach them already fifth point indirectly are covered in entomophily if the flowers are small in size all they are aggregated to form inflorescence to become more conspicuous so for this point fourth point i will provide one simple example prior to that look over all the characters once again so pollination by the agency of wind is called as anemophily. First character, pollen grains are small, light and non-sticky. Pollen grains are small, light and non-sticky. Second, stamens have long filament so that the anther can freely expose. In versatile condition, filament is attached to the anther filament is attached to the anther at the middle. As a result, anther can swing freely in the air. Stigma is often large, feathery and sticky so that the pollen grains are more likely to reach them. For this point, I will provide one simple example. In corn, cob, you will get a hair-like structure. Hair-like structure are nothing but style and the stigma they will whip in the wind to trap the pollen grains so look over here stigmas are often large feathery and sticky in cor cob the hair like structure which are hanging are nothing but style and stigma they will whip in the wind to trap the pollen grains last point if the suppose flowers are small in size, all they are aggregated to form inflorescence like structure so that they will become more conspicuous. Now next to last type is hydrophily. Pollination by the agency of water is called as hydrophily. Third type. Pollination by the agency of water is called as hydrophily.
the third type, hydrophily. Pollination by the agency of water is called as hydrophily. Pollination by the agency of water is called as hydrophily. It is noticed in 30 genera. Mostly belongs to monocots. Pollination by the agency of water is called as hydrophily. It is noticed in 30 genera. Mostly belongs to monocot. Back to first year. I am expecting that you have remembered this genera. Classification, kingdom, division, class, order, family, genus. Many closely related species are placed in one genera. So hydrophily is noticed in 30 genera, mostly belongs to monocots. Under hydrophily, three different examples that are quoted. One is Valisneria, where the pollination will take place on the surface of the water. Or it is an example for epihydrophily. Epihydrophily. Right. Jostera, where pollination will take place under the water, it is an example for hypo. It is an example for hypohydrophily. And third type is water hyacinth and water lily. So for here. In hydrophily, they are given three different examples. One is Valisneria, where the pollination will take place on the surface of the water, or epihydrophily. In Jostera, pollination will take place under the water, hypohydrophily. Third type is water hyacinth and water lily. Now we'll cover first pollination in Valisneria. Pollination in Valisneria. Pollination in Valisneria. Valisneria is a dioecious plant. Valisneria is a dioecious plant. Dioecious means sexes are separate. Male plant produces a large number of male flower on a short stalk. Male plant produces a large number of male flower on a short stalk. After formation, it will rupture and all the male flowers are set free. But they will open after reaching the surface of water. But the female plant produces a solitary female flower on a long slender stalk. After formation, the stalk elongates and bring the female flower on the surface of water. Here, stigma is trifid so that it can easily trap the pollen grains. Very interesting point. After pollination, the stalk coils. After pollination, the stalk coils and take the female flower under the water, where further development of the fruit and the seed takes place. Look over. I will repeat this matter once again. Valisneria. In Valisneria, pollination will take place on the surface of the water. Therefore, it is an example for epihydrophily. Valisneria is a dioecious plant. Dioecious means sexes are separate. Male plant produces large number of male flower on a short stalk. After formation, it will rupture and all the male flowers are set free in the water. But they will open after reaching the surface of water. But female plant produces a solitary female flower on a long slender stalk. It produces a solitary female flower on a long slender stalk. After formation, stalk elongates and bring the female flower on the surface of water. By chance, some of the floating male flowers will come in contact with the female flower. Then pollination is achiever. After pollination, the stalk coils and pushes the female flower under the water where further development of the fruit and the seed takes place. Second type is Jostera where pollination will take place under the water or it is an example for hypohydrophily. Hypohydrophily. 
the power Jostera. It is commonly called as C grasses. Based on that, you can easily remember they are belongs to marine water. Marine water. Example for the fresh water also they are given hydrilla. Okay, Jostera, where pollination will take place under the water. So generally, female flower is present inside the water or it is submerged where pollen grains are carried passively pollen grains are carried passively so last third type is water hyacinth and water lily previously we have come across this water hyacinth or in my last chapter we have come across water hyacinth it is a native of amazon basin of south america but it is introduced to India due to its beautiful flower and shape of leaf. But here, in these two cases, flowers will arise above the level of water. Flowers will come out of the water level and they are pollinated either by the agency of winds or insects. Wind or insect. In water hyacinth and water lily, Flowers will emerge from the surface of water and are pollinated either by the agency of wind or insect or you can call it as a anemophily or entomophily but it is placed under hydrophily. In water hyacinth and water lily, pollination will take place either by the agency of wind or insect. Now please remember two common characters which is noticed both in the anemophilous and hydrophilous plants. Now look over two more points related to hydrophily and anemophily. Anemophily and hydrophily number one. Generally, the flowers do not have attractive color. Flowers do not have attractive color. Second, they do not produce any scent and odor. They do not produce any scent and odor. So look over here. The character which is common to both anemophilus and hydrophilus flower. Anemophilus and hydrophilus flower. Number one, flowers are generally dull in color. They do not produce scent and odor. They do not produce scent and odor. One more point. In anemophily and hydrophily, pollination is a chance factor. In anemophily and hydrophily, pollination is a chance factor. To compensate this, they produce more number of pollen grains. In anemophily and hydrophily, Pollination is a chance factor. To compensate this, they produce more number of pollen grains. They produce more number of pollen grains. For CT purpose, you please remember one more point. In hydrophily, generally pollen grains, generally pollen grains are large and ribbon shaped. So for need purpose, remember this point in case of hydrophily. Pollen grains are large and ribbon shaped. Second point, they are protected from wetting by an mucilaginous covering. In hydrophily, pollen grains are protected from wetting by mucilaginous covering. Mucilaginous covering. So now, move to next one more matter. Pollen pistol interaction. Now, I plan to cover pollen pistol interaction. The ability of the pistol to recognize the pollen, the ability of the pistol to recognize the pollen followed by its acceptance or rejection is due to chemical secretion. This is also called as chemotropic, chemotropic secretion. Look over here. Pollen pistol interaction. The ability of the pistol 
to recognize the pollen followed by its acceptance or rejection is due to chemical secretion or you can call it as a chemotropic secretion after pollination after pollination when the pollen grains will reach the stigma after pollination when the pollen grains will reach the stigma in time produces a small tube like structure known as pollen tube this pollen tube will come out through the weak spots present on the enzyme known as germ pore after pollination when the pollen grains will reach the stigma in time germinates and produces a small tube like structure known as pollen tube this pollen tube will come out through the thin places present on the enzyme known as germ pore as previously i covered this line in germ pore sporopollinase absent okay one two three germ pores are present in the dicot but whereas in case of monocot only one germ pore is present now the pollen tube will make its way through the stigma style and the growth of the pollen tube is continuous till it will reaches female gametophyte or embryo sac look over here after pollination when the pollen grains will reach the stigma it will germinate in time produces a small tube like structure known as pollen tube this pollen tube will come out through the weak spots present on the enzyme known as germ pores pollen tube will make its way through the stigma style and growth of the pollen tube is continuous till it will reaches embryo sac pollen tube can enter the embryo sac by three ways one is porogamy chelogamy mesogamy porogamy chelogamy mesogamy when the pollen tube will enter the embryo sac through micropyle that it is called as porogamy when the pollen tube will enter the embryo sac through micropyle that it is called as porogamy when the pollen tube will enter the embryo sac through chalagel end that it is called as chalagogamy when the pollen tube will enter the embryo sac through integument that it is called as mesogamy so look over once again pollen tube can enter the embryo sac by three ways micropyle chalagel end integuments when the pollen tube will enter the embryo sac through micropyle that it is called as porogamy when the pollen tube will enter the embryo sac through chalagel end that it is called as chalagogamy when the pollen tube will enter the embryo sac through integument then it is called as mesogamy but the most convenient route is through micropyle before that try to recollect the matter which i covered in my first part in around 60% of the angiosperm in around 60% of the angiosperm pollen grains are released to the environment at a two cell stage larger is called as vegetative cell smaller is called as generative cell generative cell will undergo mitotic division and produces two male gametes in around 60% of the angiosperm pollen grains are released to the environment at two cell stage larger is called as vegetative cell smaller is called as generative cell generative cell will undergo division and produces two male gametes in rest of the angiosperm before shedding into the environment generative cell will undergo division and produces two male gamete or pollen grains are released at the three cell stage where since from the beginning pollen tube will carry two male gamete back to same previous class story try to recollect this matter in my previous class we have come across eight cell embryo sac at maturity it is having eight nuclei but cells are seven in number 
three cells which are present towards three cells which are present towards the micropyle is called as egg apparatus it is having one egg cell at the center it is having one egg cell at the center on either side you will get synergites one egg cell at the center on either side you will get synergites it is having fully form apparatus that will give direction for the entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac so starting from the deposition of the pollen on the stigma up to the entry of pollen tube is called as pollen pistil interaction repeat the matter so recollect the structure of embryo sac out of eight daughter cells three cells which are present towards the micropylar end is called as egg apparatus it is composed of one egg cell at the center on either side you will get two helper cells or synergites helper cell is having cellular thickening known as filiform apparatus that will give direction for the entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac that will give that for the entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac now next matter is last line related to pollen pistil starting from the deposition of the pollen on the stigma up to the entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac is called as pollen pistil interaction so with respect to your practical is concerned with respect to practical is concerned there is one question is there they may arise this question for the three marks prepare a temporary pollen prepare this slide of pollen germination and calculate the number of pollen grains so now question arise why i am explaining this matter in the theory because it is given even in the theory also very simple matter take a clean glass slide take a clean glass slide put a drop of take a clean glass slide put a drop of 10% put a drop of 10% sucrose solution or you can call it as a sugar solution sprinkle some pollen grains from the given material generally they will provide you vinca i hope that you know this vinca it is a very important medicinal plant vinca is commonly called as periwinkle in english kannada it is called as sada mallige urdu it is called as sada bahar it is a very important medicinal plant which is used for the treatment of cancer take a clean dry glass slide put a drop of 10% sucrose or sugar solution sprinkle the pollen grain then put the cover slip while putting cover slip you have to take care try to prevent the entry of air bubbles i will show you the technique how you have to put the cover slip hold the cover slip in between the thumb and index finger hold the cover slip in between thumb and index finger one end should touch the glass slide another end should rest on the needle bend the cover slip slowly when it is very near to the mounting media remove the needle followed by that you observe the slide under microscope you can easily notice the germination of pollen grains germination of pollen grains for neat purpose remember this point boron in the form of boric acid and calcium will play a significant role in the germination of pollen grains boron in the form of boric acid and calcium will play a significant role in the germination of pollen grains